My name is Elliot Grove of the Raindance Film Festival. And you want to make movies, you want to do it full time, and you want to give up the day job, right? Well, hey, before we start, could you go to the bottom of the page and could you just like or subscribe to our YouTube channel? While you're there, you'll see a link where you can subscribe to our free newsletter three times a week with all kinds of interesting information. This little segment is part of the Creating a Business Plan class that we do at Raindance. Many filmmakers, just like you, have found this a really useful uh, way to advance their career, creating a strategy for yourself. Well, kind of the first step to giving up your day job is go to a lawyer, you can do it online, and create a company, a, a company that has shares, whether it's a hundred or a thousand, is really up to you or the advice you get from your lawyer or financial advisor. Now, if you're in the United Kingdom, this link here, you can actually go and get all the information you need to set up a company yourself. It's very inexpensive. And if you have any questions, you just call that number and there's a very nice lady in Cardiff who will help you um, sort yourself out. Okay, so you've got the company now, right? The next thing you do is you take that great idea you've got for a movie, that screenplay, that short, that feature, that whatever it is, and you sell it to your own company for a dollar, a euro, a pound. You no longer own the copyright to this project, but your company owns it and you own 100% of the company. Now, when you've done that, remember that you need to make sure that you have the rights to, to the script. So if it's a friend or a writer, make sure that they sign a proper contract. Our legal suite of films in the members area or on our courses will tell you how to do that. And then you need to create a business plan for your project. I'm assuming you've already done that. But now your company has value. Do you see the importance of that? You see, when it's just sitting as an idea, uh, you know, in your head or on a pile of papers beside the bed, it really, really, really doesn't have value. But the minute you sell it to a company, you have a business plan, which really has a hard look at the costs of making the project, the potential income of the project, and hopefully the profit. You see how that company starts to have value, but it's only one project. Why not do it again? Maybe you've got a second project. Maybe this project, however, is a animation or a short, or maybe it's a documentary, or maybe a friend of yours has got a script and you're going to collaborate, but make sure when they enter your collaborator, collaboration process, your incubator, make sure that you understand how the money's going to be sorted out when it goes into profit, as well as who does what. Got that? And maybe, maybe there's a music group that you want to promote, a group of musicians, a recording artist. Again, get them to agree with you on some principle and vend that project into your incubator. And now you have your sweetheart deal number six. I call it number six. That sweetheart deal that's been driving you mad. You put it in there, you develop a business plan. And now let's say you've got it financed. Wow. At this point, you see, what you do is you want to make sure that you know it's going to be financed and then you set up a separate limit, limited company and sell the rights of that film to the new company for whatever. Yeah. Now, typically at this point in time, the uh, UPV, the unique project vehicle will get about 200% of the development costs of the project. Now that could be script rights, it could be your, uh, your time or whoever you've employed to create the script and the budget and the marketing materials and so on. 200% of that comes back to the incubator, but you as the incubator, remember it's your company, owns a slice of the UPV, the new project. It could be 1%, it could be 50%. Every project is different. It's up to you to decide how that works with you and your investors. Now, the next thing you do is you do, it could be a five year, but I'm looking at a three year business plan. The black line represents your living expenses over the next year. Yeah. 
And then it, let's say after a year, you get your first project financed and as income starts coming in, but at some point you see income is going to exceed expenses. It's right around here, year three, two and a half, year three, that you give up the day job, right? And there you are. Now, some people don't like doing this because you're essentially mortgaging off or pre-selling your future profits, which is a disadvantage. And some people would rather do it all on their own. But the minute you take on investors, you see, they're going to take a slice of the, um, of the incubator. Let, let, let me explain how this works. So let's say you've got an investor that is really interested in putting money into your UPV, that sweetheart deal that you've got together. Well, you can offer them three options. They can own, they can put money only into your sweetheart deal, or they can put money only into your project incubator because they think there's more eggs in the basket. They have a better chance of, 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 of making money, or they can put some in the UPV and some of the incubator. Do you see how it gives your investors options? It's a very interesting and powerful tool. Okay, let's going back here. Now, what we do at Raindance, let's suppose this is the world of Raindance and all the people with scripts that come to us through our Raindance Raw Talent Incubator, we call it. And we have a self-assessment form. I'll put the link in the YouTube data below. And let's say, oh, we've picked a project. Let's say it's your project. Well, two things happen. On one side, the MA students create the paperwork, the script breakdown, the schedule, the budget. At the same time, I work with the producer and work on the marketing plan, the key artwork, the budget, money, and also talent. How's that going to work? And once we have those two things together, we go to a sales agent, a film sales agent, and get their opinion on what the estimated return is. And they will give me three numbers, high, medium, and low. Fair wind, high, oh, not so fair, low. Guess which number a potential investor looks at? The low number, of course. And if that low number is greater than the budget that you need to make the film, Wow, now you have a business plan that you can act, actually go out and get finance. Now, there's three different bu budget levels that um, we work with here at Braindance. One is very low budget, let's say under 15,000 pounds. That usually is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, five, 10, 15,000 pounds is easy. Well, I shouldn't say easy. It is possible to get through crowdfunding. One of our MA mentors, Kate Shenton, made a horror film, crowdfunded, total budget, only £5,000, sold well around the world. They got their money back and everyone would get a little slice of the profit. When it goes between, say, 150, 150 to maybe three, 400,000, there's different tax deals that are applicable in the UK. Now, they've gone quiet right now in 2021, but we think they will come back. That means that the government gives tax rebates to your investor, meaning if they give you a pound for your film or dollar, they can take that off of their British tax bill. Very, very attractive, very successful program. And if it's over 800,000 to maybe 2 million, 3 million, now we look at a co-production where you partner with another company in another country and they can vend in their tax deals to the budget as well and help you make the film. Well, that's about it, really. But this isn't new. You know, but 100 years ago in Los Angeles, the film studios at that time were basically, if I can be crass for a minute, money laundering uh, vehicles for the mob money coming out of Chicago, New York, LA. And they would make movies with it. And the moguls at the time treated the talent and the crew so badly that one day a whole bunch of them left. Writers, directors, producers, camera, makeup, actors. And they went downtown LA and they chipped in a bit of money each, rented an office and manned the telephones, helping each other find work. A cooperative. And do you know what? That's still going today. It's called United Artists. When I travel around to the different rain dance hubs, I see these little groups of people working together in the same model as this, sharing the work and sharing the spoils. It's a very good thing. 
This also is used in music. You know, David Bowie, the famous, amazing musician, about 10 years before his death, he actually floated all the future income from all his recordings on the stock exchange in America, raised $60 million. So that those investors could share in his, in the profits from his past work. There's many, many ways, different ways to do this, but basically that's the basic principle. And what's more, all it takes is ambition and talent. We know you've got the talent or you wouldn't be here. My name's Elliot Grove of Raindance. That's how you get a hold of me. Please tell your friends, share this, like it on YouTube. We'll like you back. Thanks for watching.